Open your Bibles today to Hebrews chapter 2, and we're going to start reading at verse 11. And it reads, For both he that sanctifieth and those who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Notice it says the word sanctifieth. For both he that sanctifieth, that word actually means to be set apart. You know, the for he that sanctifieth, that's talking about the Messiah, which is, his name is Yahushua. Uh, Yahushua is the name of our Messiah. He's the one that sanctified us. And those who are sanctified, of course, talking about us, are all of one. And the all of one is talking about is that we're all of one, uh, you, could, you could interpret it as all of one spirit or all of one family. In fact, the Amplified Translation translates it that way, that we're all of one family which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. In other words, the, in the plan of redemption of Yahuwah, his intention was that we would be all of one family, of one spirit, that we would be partakers of his nature, and that, we, uh, that, that he would not be ashamed to call us brethren because we are a part of the family of Yahuwah. And uh, this, is, this is the plan of redemption, understanding We've been talking for, uh, this is our third broadcast concerning this particular subject of the, you, the plan of redemption that you, Yahuwah has before the foundation of the world, that we read earlier, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Now this, this, this happened the moment that you as a person receives the Messiah and that we are truly born again, that we have become partakers of His divine nature, have received of His Spirit, at that very moment that that happens in a person's life, our Father can see that work complete in Him. He sees that work perfected and already done in us because He has imparted to us His nature. You know, I said earlier that we could not change who we were. We could not uh, become righteous. We could not become holy by keeping um, the commandments of the Torah or the law. This, that, these, those things could not change our nature. That was Yahuwah's perfection. That was Yahuwah's means of, of revealing. See, the, the Bible says in the book of Galatians that the, the law or the Torah is our schoolmaster to bring us to, to Christ or to the Messiah. In other words, the, the Torah or the word of Yahuwah is a reflection of a mirror so we can recognize our need for a Savior, that we were... Uh, unholy, un unrighteous, and that we could not be uh, approach a holy God, we could not approach uh, our Creator because we were, sin had separated us from Him and we had become children of, of the devil. We were, we were uh, according to the book of Ephesians, we, the same spirit that works in the children of disobedience was, was working in us. And we needed to be born again, as our Messiah said. Unless a man is born again, he'll not enter the kingdom of Yahuwah. So it was of necessity that the plan of redemption included not just forgiveness of sins. See, if, if, you, were, if you were just forgiven of sins, when you die and leave this earth, if that's all that was, the redemption is, is about forgiveness of sins, that when you die and leave this earth, well, in heaven you would still need forgiveness of sins because there really would be no change in who you were. Uh, we needed to become uh, a new creature in Mashiach. We had to, to, to receive his nature in order to accomplish what Yahuwah desired was that he would, he would uh, bring us into his family and that we would be like him. Uh, that's why it says here that he's not ashamed to call us brethren because the work is done. Hallelujah. This is good news to know. You know, it's good news to know this because there's a lot of believers who uh, have received Messiah, received His Spirit, His nature. I, I shared with you earlier that he that is joined, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, I believe it's verse 12, he that is joined unto the Lord, it says Lord there, but the actual translation is Yahuwah. He that is joined unto Yahuwah is one spirit. Hallelujah. We're one spirit with with our Messiah, with our Father, hallelujah, we have become one with Him because why? We have His nature, we have His Spirit. And this is brought out clearly if you read through the book of uh, Hebrews, 
I want to read a verse to you in chapter 3, verse 1, uh, and I believe Paul was the writer of the book of Hebrews. But it says, Wherefore, holy brethren, notice that, wherefore, holy brethren, he starts off in, in chapter 3, verse 1. Now, how many of you out there consider yourself holy? Well, most, most believers, you know, think that that's something that, that we're trying to attain to, uh, holiness. In other words, by me uh, living a good life, by me uh, not being part of this world, and, and that, that if I, you know, don't wear makeup, if I don't do this or do that, then I'll be holy. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not correct. The, the holiness is His holiness that we have partaken of. We're holy because He's holy, because we, he, we have partaken of His nature. That's why Paul said, wherefore, holy brethren. And actually the word holy means, and actually in, the, in, in, in Jewish terms, that means separate, like to be set apart, unique, special. You know, when Yahuwah said that He called us to be holy, He was talking about He was calling us to be separate from the earth. From, I mean, from the other people of the earth, that we took, we'd be separated from them because we were special. We're special unto Yahuwah because we are uh, partakers of His covenant. We have His favor because we trust His word, we trust His salvation, and our faith is in Him. And because of that, you know, we're special in that respect. Not special because we're better than anyone in our own merits. It's talking about we're special because He's shown us favor because we've chosen to believe his word and put our faith and trust in his covenant. But anyway, it says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession or confession, Christ Jesus, it says in the King James, but that's actually translated better would be the, the Messiah, Mashiach, Yahushua. And through the work of the Son, through, through Messiah, uh, paying the price for our redemption because see our our sins demanded justice to be paid because Yahuwah is holy he demands that uh, there, there be a price paid for man's rebellion and sin You're, every every sin that you've ever committed or, or anyone else has ever committed has been covered under the blood of Yeshua Yahushua HaMashiach it's been covered because not only covered, but it, our, our nature has been done away with. Not only, like I said earlier, that are, have we, uh, are we forgiven of sins, but we have become partakers of His divine nature. And this work in, in salvation or redemption is a complete work that He's already done and perfected in us. Now, I know we're waiting for the, for the redemption to be complete or the adoption to be complete, the book of Romans says, waiting for the adoption to be complete, the redemption of our body. And until that happens, we, we, we've only experienced part of redemption, part of the plan of salvation. Excuse me. Now, if you will, <clears throat> turn over to Romans, I mean, to, again, to Hebrews, but I want to go over to chapter, chapter 7, where it talks about that in verse 19, for the Torah, or the law, made nothing perfect. See, the law couldn't make you, or the Torah, was, there, was, there was nothing that by keeping the law or keeping the commandments that would change who we, were, who we were. Now, does that mean that we don't try to keep the commandments or that we don't uh, obey the commandments of Yahuwah? No. But it, all that means is that we could not, by keeping the commandments, change our nature. <coughs> Excuse me. For the law made nothing perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw near unto Yahuwah. See, the law did not make anything perfect. It didn't change who we were. But the bringing in of a better hope did. What that's really, really saying there is that there was a... That's why Yahuwah said that he was going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And he was going to uh, put his laws in, the, in our hearts. In our minds, he would write them. He said, I will put, give a, put, put a new spirit within you. See, and then he says, if I'll put my spirit in you. And because he did that, that, was, that, did, uh, that actually did a complete work in us and that it changed our nature. So we were like him. Because that was the necessity of salvation, is that we not just be forgiven, but that we be born again and be partakers of his nature. In fact, I'll read in chapter 8, 
uh, of Hebrews, it said, For if the first covenant had been faultless, there should have been no need to, to seek for a second. In other words, if the first covenant, if, the, if it was perfect, in other words, if it, it would have accomplished what Yahuwah uh, uh, had given it to us for in the beginning, then there would no, be no need for a second covenant. Or it says here, for finding fault with them, in verse 8, Behold, the days come, says Yahuwah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith Yahuwah. For this is the covenant that, that I will make with the house of Israel. And after those days, saith Yahuwah, I will put my laws in their mind, and I will write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a mighty one, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahuwah, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. And that he says a new covenant, he has made the made the first old. Now that he, now that which decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish away. What this is basically saying is that the the, the new covenant or the covenant that uh, he was making with the house of Israel, the, this renewed covenant, so to speak, is that he would uh, accomplish the plan of redemption by giving us his his spirit. That he would he would uh, be able to cause us to walk in his ways and in his past because we were walking because we had the ability to do so because we now had his nature. You know, it's, it's pretty hard to make a uh, a dog act like a cat or say a cat act like a dog because their nature is to act like they are, like they were created. And man had fallen and become a child of the devil. So naturally, that's why men act the way they do is because of their fallen nature because of their 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 that's who they are it does should surprise us that you that we see you know men uh killing one another doing the horrible things they do to one another because that's their nature to do so but see the plan of redemption would be that yahuwah would change what we had become and that we would be a partaker of his holiness of his goodness and by, by doing that, by us receiving our Messiah, that he was able to impart his spirit and his nature within us. And that would accomplish the plan of redemption. And now we're just waiting for the redemption to be complete, the redemption of our body. And I know that in our flesh we still, we still miss it, we still sin, we still uh, fall short in, a, in our flesh and in our thinking. That's why we have to renew our minds. The Bible talks about Romans chapter 12, that we need to renew our minds. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. <clears throat> and so once we renew our mind to the word of Yahuwah, then we, have, get, we can get the revelation and understanding of who we really are on the inside. And this gives us such victory and confidence. Get, this gives us power over our flesh. This gives us power over our thinking. The Bible talks about that we're to cast down every imagination, every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the word of Yahuwah and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of the word. In other words, we're to, we are to renew our minds in, with the word here and begin to see us from Yahuwah's perspective. That we're now, the Bible talks about over in 1 John, Beloved, now are we the sons of Yahuwah, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. See, we're at, the Bible also says in 1 John that as he is, so are we in this earth. Well, how is he? As, as the Messiah is, as Yahushua is, so are we in this world. Wow, that's, that's amazing. But see, that's talking about on the inside, as he is, so are we. That means that we have been... Uh, not only forgiven of our sins, but we have now have partaken of His Spirit. And when the Father sees us, He sees us in the realm of the Spirit, perfected, holy. That's why the Bible says we're complete in Him. That's why the Bible says that over in Hebrews chapter 10, um, in fact, I'll just read this to you. Hebrews chapter 10, verse uh, 14 says, For by one offering, 
This is talking about the offering that the Messiah made for us. For by one